Good evening to everyone and welcome to today's wonderful evening with Dr. Murli Bhardwaj. Mock test 7 we are with. Tomorrow we'll have mock test 8 and in no time we finish the discussion of the 50 full scale grand tests. Each grand test is being uploaded as an ebook containing the mind maps, 200 mind maps of explanation, which will give a quick consolidated review of the entire topic. Nice to see Ravinder, Saurav, and many more who are all online. So can the online students can punch as the voice loud and clear for all of you, doctor? Yes. Please drop a line to all your friends that the live class has started. Yes, thank you, Ravinder, JJ Singh, and many more who are all online. Good. So, doctor, let us start. So, once you download the ebook, you have the schedule uh, of the program. You have the full schedule of 50 grantors. And then uh, you have the question paper. So try to solve this paper just like the exam form, right? So uh, just like in a real exam form, you solve, keep a um, try to creep a timer and try to solve it and then join the discussion. After the question paper, you are having the uh, mind maps. Now, a chest radiograph of a patient with shortness of the breath is being shown in the figure. What are the most consistent finding here? So basically here, what you are able to see is the right pulmonary artery, which is uh, the pulmonary artery, which is very prominent. There is pulmonary pleura. So whenever there is any left to right shunt like ASD, VSD or PDA, then the likelihood of having a chest radiograph with pulmonary pleura is what you need to remember. Now, during a sports medicine clinic, Visit a 22 year old basketball player reports a knee injury. So, you have done this physical examination. So, during this physical examination, there is a clunk as the knee is flexed from the extended position. So, what do you call this as, doctor? We call it as a pivot shift test, is what you need to remember. It's called pivot. Shift test. Nice to see Saurav, JJ Singh, and many more who are all online. So it is the anterior cruciate ligament. 
whenever it become injured then a positive test is marked by a palpable shift or clunk during the maneuver is what you have to remember now doctor a 25 year old presents with anterior shoulder pain so now you are doing the clinical examination of her and uh, you are asking her to resist as he as the examiner tries to externally rotate her arm which is positioned on to her side with the elbow flexed at 90 degrees so the resisted internal rotation test assess the strength and integrity of the subscapularis muscle is what you have to remember wonderful to see dr anita rani very good anita nice to see you and uh, this year all you guys should crack the real exam just 50 full scale grand tests honestly sincerely religiously try to solve the paper follow the discussion at least 100 questions i discuss all 200 questions explanatory answered mind map is available once you solve these 10,000 questions, every paper has got 30 to 40 image based questions. So, 30 year old graphic designer has a complaint of numbness and tingling in her pump. And using the cotton wasp, you are trying to look for the sensory supply. The thumb index, middle finger, and radial half of the ring finger, they're all supplied by the median nerve is what you need to basically remember. A 25 year old pianist presents with difficulty in spreading her fingers apart. So what are you testing? Pad dab, dorsal intercourse lead to abduction of the fingers away from one another. Whereas the, uh, yeah, whereas the, So, JJ Singh is asking, sir, this also includes the AIMS PYQ. Yes, doctor. Basically, AIMS, AIMS, INICT, PGA Chandigarh, JIPMAR, and NEET PG. All these are the major question banks. So any number of years entrances happen, these are the ultimate reality. They continue to pluck and pick from this question bank. Hardly there are 1000 topics. Each topic has got around 15, 20 points that you need to thoroughly revise and understand the concept. So all the interosia, both Palmar and also the dorsal interosia, they all typically are uh, supplied by the ulnar nerve is what you need to remember. A 28 year old software engineer with numbness and weakness in his right hand, in her right hand. So typically what you are showing is a ferment sign. Here you can see the flexion, right doctor? You can see the flexion. So, Whenever there is a weakness of adductor policies, which is innervated by the alert nerve, whenever you are trying to pull out the paper in the Froment's test between the thumb and the index finger, the thumb's distal joint get flexed, which is typically the Froment sign positivity which is the feature of the alar neru palsy is what you have to remember. A 26 year old graphic designer has a problem of numbness and tingling. So what is this called? This is called eliciting a positive tinnel sign, which is indicative of median nerve compression because the tingling sensation is occurring when eliciting Tinnel at the thumb index and the middle fingers is what you need to remember. So, in the same, uh, 
mind map, I give to you all the key points that you need to remember about this very, very high yield topic frequently asked in the exam. A 26 year old female office worker has a nocturnal thumbness and tingling. You have performed this test. So what is this called? Felon's test. Felon's test also is suggestive of uh, the corporal tunnel syndrome is what you need to remember. So during a physical examination, a physician is performing a specific test where he stabilizes the distal interphalangeal joint. So he stabilizes the distal interphalangeal joint of the finger and asks her to flex the proximal interphalangeal joint which is typically testing the flexor digitorum superficialis function is the one which is being tested is what you need to remember. So doctor, a 60 year old diabetic patient, right lower lobe pneumonia, despite antibiotic treatment, her condition did not improve and there is a thick walled gallbladder with gallstones. Right, Doc? So, this is basically gallbladder necrosis because of the cholecystitis, which is an indication for an emergency cholecystectomy, is considered to be the management of choice, is what you need to remember. A 45 year old. Intermittent jaundice, right upper quadrant pain, fever, rapid weight loss, elevated liver enzymes, laparoscopic cholecystectomy was planned and intraoperative cholangiogram has been done. So basically the patient's clinical presentation, jaundice, right upper quadrant pain, fever, laboratory findings, they're all suggestive of the bile duct obstruction. Intraoperative cholangiogram is suggestive of cholecystitis, and the most appropriate next step is postoperative ERCP. Postoperative, um, typically, what you need to do is ERCP with stone extraction is considered to be the management of choice. A 50 year old woman with a history of jaundice and recurrent upper abdominal pain has underwent ERCP. And uh, imaging studies, what you are able to see dilatation of the intrahepatic biliary tree and a stent was inserted for temporary relief. Subsequently, laparoscopic CBD exploration was done. So, what is the most likely reason for the initial ERCP failure, doctor? So whenever there is a large impacted stone in the common bile duct, that's what you can see here, is one of the reasons for a failed ERCP. So any large impacted multiple stones, ampullary anomalies, like duodenal, diverticulum, or ampullary stricture, they're all considered to be the important risk factors. And what are the presenting features of cholecystitis, doctor? There is a stone in the bile duct. Any jaundice, upper abdominal pain, fever, suggestive of cholangitis, dark urine, pale stools. And what do you see on imaging? Dilated proximal CBD with two large stones which are causing the obstruction and dilation of the intrahepatic biliary tree is what you are able to see doctor. A 54-year-old woman with the history of the heart burn, regurgitation, recent difficulty swallowing both the liquids and solids, and you have done an endoscopy. So fundamentally, all the history suggests of peptic stricture, secondary to reflux esophagitis. So whenever peptic stricture is there, with reflux esophagitis, the most important step is to exclude malignancy and proceed with endoscopic balloon dilatation to alleviate the stricture and improve the symptoms is what you need to remember. A 54 year old with a long standing heart burn, biopsy does not show dysplasia. What is it showing? Only metaplasia. What is that called? 
direct esophagus so everything anything about it obesity smoking male gender advanced age chronic grd then all responsible for barrett's esophagus life long proton pump inhibitor therapy in severe cases you need to do anti reflux surgery is considered to be important to treat is what you need to remember so doctor following the diagnosis of esophageal adenocarcinoma in a 60 year old who has got a weight loss and dysphagia you have done a staging investigation it suggests the tumor is potentially resectable so what is the current guideline do surgery with or without neoadjuvant chemotherapy neoadjuvant chemotherapy is considered to be the management of choice so you should know what are the treatment option surgical resection potentially preceded by neoadjuvant chemotherapy depending upon the tumor stage and the patient fitness is considered to be the management in case of esophageal adenocarcinoma is what you need to remember a patient presents with hypertension melena initial endoscopy shows significant blood within the stomach without a clear source so this is the typical endoscopic appearance of the esophageal lesion i mean the lesion in the stomach so what is this doctor gastrointestinal stomal tumor which is seek it positive so you need to do local resection so everything anything doctor kit gene pdgf ra gene sporadic mutations uncontrolled growth from the interstitial cells of kejol are responsible for the gastrointestinal stromal tumor and uh, typically ct and endoluminal ultrasound you need to do for staging you need to do local resection of the tumor without the need for lymphadenectomy imatinib misylate is the treatment for the metastatic recurrent or large tumors among the gastrointestinal stromal tumors is what you should remember a 54 year old woman 10 year history of type 2 diabetes presents with a non healing ulcer on her right foot she reports a diminished sensation in both feet so what you are able to see is typically the ulcer on the foot so diabetes non healing ulcer on the heel diminished foot sensation all means diabetic neuropathic ulcer so you need to control the sugar and local wound care and pressure offloading need to be done doctor 60 year old man history of uncontrolled hypertension so what are the fundoscopic findings doctor flame shaped hemorrhages flame shaped hemorrhages cotton wool spots on fundoscopy are characteristic of hypertensive retinopathy which occurs as a result of chronic or acute elevated bp leading to retinal vascular changes is what you need to basically remember so i leave the literature to you hypertensive retinopathy how do you classify narrowing of the retinal arteries hemorrhagic exudates cotton wool spots there are all the various components 45 year old palpitations mild shortness of breath on exertion there is a cardiac murmur at the apex where you are able to listen a systolic click systolic click so symptomatic mitral valve collapse also there is mild mitral regurgitation so whenever it is there you need to regularly monitor consider beta blockers for the symptomatic management it is what you need to remember so family history of mvp marfan syndrome female gender mid systolic click followed by late systolic murmur so there are all the features of the mitral valve prolapse is what you need to 
remember. Now, doctor. 70 year old man presents with exertional dyspnea, episodes of angina, harsh systolic ejection murmur. So, what are you seeing here? You are looking for the radiation of the murmur into the carotids. Right, doctor? So, which is the murmur that radiates into carotids? It is a harsh systolic ejection murmur at the right upper sternal border that radiates to the carotids is characteristic of aortic stenosis is what you need to remember. A 65 year old male with a history of myocardial infarction with fatigue, occasional palpitations, a radiograph has been taken. So what you can see, you are able to see one of the complications of the Myocardial infarction, which is left ventricular aneurysm, is what you are able to see here, doctor. So, post myocardial infarction scarring leading to left ventricular aneurysm is what you, you need to remember. A chest radiograph in a patient with differential blood pressure between the upper and lower extremities is being shown to you. So the presence, the, what is this called as? This is called as rib notching, right, doctor, rib notching. So presence of the rib notching is a classic sign of the coactation of the iota along with the differential blood pressure is what you should remember. Live unstained spirochetes. So that completes our uh, Image based MCQs, doctor. Good. So nice to see JJ Singh, Anita, Saurav, Ravindra, and many more who are all online. So, what is the secret of winning the game, doctor? It is not reading massively, it is reading specifically, reading with focus. Reading constantly, reading with perseverance, reading to the perfection and reading what examiner expects you in the tomorrow's exam. How do we know what is examiner expecting? You need to analyze. Past 10 years, 10 into 200 MCQs, 2000 MCQs of the neat pitch. Every year, two episodes of INICET into 10 years is 20 exams, 20 into 200, 4,000 MCQs. 4,000 plus 2,000, 6,000 MCQs, if you do the post-mortem, post-mortem. Thank you, Ravinder, for always uh, a hearty appreciation from Ravinder. Sir, Dr. Murli, sir, notes and mind maps is the real secret. The secret is within you, doctor. My job is how much I can stimulate you to consume the content. So this 50 full scale grant test. Every grant test I give the PDF beforehand. Solve it in an exam like condition. Then I publish on the learnograph.com the ebook containing 200 explanatory answers as mind maps. At least 100 questions I discuss with you like this. All 50 grantors into 200, 10,000 questions if you solve. Nobody is going to stop you to become the winner. Aap koi app liya hoga, koi face to face coaching gaya hoga. Kahi bhi jau, kahi bhi padu. Magar, the mock test me, I will sharpen the saw and make you the best and resilient jockey in the tomorrow's race called NEET PG 2024. Every day, hum classmates, roommates, benchmates, stable mates banna. The job of the teacher is not to teach really. You're all brilliant guys. You're all adults. Who can teach you? The job of the teacher is to sit with you, inspire you, become your classmate, stimulate you to prepare every day, which is the only secret. In the past 25 years, I had fortune to train almost 3 lakh 
medical students and doctors. A lot of them are top consultants today. I'm practicing along with my own students as the internal medicine specialist. So I always enjoy it. Once upon a time, they were all sitting like you, thinking, oh my God, do we get the seat or not? But today, they're in Merck S class, right? So I always look all of you tiny thoughts in the same way that one day you will become a accomplished cardiologist, cardiothoracic surgeon, neurologist, neurosurgeon. Always hold the dream and prepare for the exam. So, doctor, let's continue our journey. So, if uh, whenever you solve the paper and come to the session, this looks very easy. If you didn't solve the paper and come, then this looks very fast. But I have no choice than to be very fast. So, doctor, you want to see spirochetes. Dark field microscopy is the best way to see the spirochetes. A researcher is studying the cell samples. It is the tunnel assay that specifically labels the DNA breaks that occur during the apoptosis is what you need to remember. So all the DNA fragmentation typically lead to a ladder pattern which is observed by the electrophoresis is what you need to remember. Now, a biopsy sample is taken from the lymph node. Intranuclear pseudo-inclusions are found. What are they called? They are called Dutcher bodies are commonly associated with the B-cell lymphomas and multiple myeloma. So you should know Donovani bodies, granuloma inguinal, Dutcher bodies, B-cell lymphoma and multiple myeloma. Farber bodies, Farber disease, flame figures, isnophilic cellulitis, floret cells, pleomorphic lymph lipoma, flower cells, HTLV1 and adult T cell leukemia and lymphoma. Ghost cells are typically seen in calcifying cystic odontogenic tumors. A little bit of quizzing, don't worry if you don't know any of them also. 55 year old male, pretty weight loss, fullness in the left upper quadrant, blood test reveals 18% blasts, 23% basophils. So what is this phase called? Accelerated phase. So you should know chronic phase, accelerated phase, blast phase. That is how you need to remember, doctor. So less than 10% blast is chronic, 10 to 19 is accelerated, more than 20% blast is called the blast phase of the chronic myeloid leukemia is what you need to remember. Now, doctor, 70-year-old man develops thrombocytopenia. Platelet count of 55,000, five days after starting the heparin therapy. So after heparin initiation, whenever thrombosis develops, low platelet count is there, then that is the definition of heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. So you should know everything about it. Thrombocytopenia in HIT is typically severe with platelet counts often below 2 lakhs. HIT increases. Though it is thrombocytopenia, there is no bleeding. There is risk of thrombosis. Then uh, it is the immune-mediated reaction to the anti-heparin antibody. PFA, PF4 antibody is the one which is the main culprit. It can occur with both the low molecular weight and also unfractionated heparin. It usually occurs 5 to 14 days after the initiation of the heparin. Stop the heparin, use the direct thrombin inhibitor like lepirudin, argathrobon is considered to be the treatment of choice to treat the hit is what you need to remember. So doctor, 20 year old, progressive guide attacks, he has slurred speech and uh, Progressive guide ataxia, slurred speech are characteristic of spinocerebellar ataxia, which are due to the CAG trinucleotide repeat expansion affecting the ataxic protein is what you need to remember. 
then doctor. A three-year-old girl has sudden onset of pelor, bruising, decreased urine output. After bloody diarrhea, that is classical of hemolytic uremic syndrome, which is caused by O157 H7 strain. And what are the triad of features, doctor? Acute renal failure, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, and thrombocytopenia is what you need to remember. So, doctor, now, a 28-year-old woman is brought to emergency after being physically assaulted by her spouse following a dispute over dowry. Which law? Say, <coughs> what does he? Section 304B addresses dowry related offenses, 377, unnatural offenses. So, all these sections you need to be sure. 498A, punishment for cruelty by husband or relatives. Section 172, punishment for avoiding summons, one month jail. Section 174, punishment for non attendance to Summons is what we have to remember. Good doctor. Next, a man is convicted for non aggravated robbery. So, death sentence is for aggravated murder. Life imprisonment is also typically for murder. Robbery not resulting in death often results in imprisonment, which can be rigorous or simple. So, you should know. Uh, imprisonment for life means equivalent to 20 years under section 57 IPC. And uh, um, death sentence, it is authorized under the section 53 IPC, mandatory for aggravated murder. Pardon can be given by the President of India under section 354. And death sentence, whenever given by lower court, must always be confirmed by the high court. And death sentence cannot be given not for the pregnant woman under section 416 IPC. You all know very well uh, that what is that movie? Shah Rukh Khan's movie recently is there, no? Pregnant woman is being prevented from the death sentence, right? Uh, I'm unable to recall that movie's name. One of the movies may heroine is pregnant. Double action of Shah Rukh Khan. I, I, somebody type if you can recall what is that movie name where uh, death sentence is avoided for a pregnant woman. Sometimes we should watch movies to get top rank in Need PG Doctor. Now, 30 year old served a legal document to come to the court to provide testimony in a civil dispute. What is that called? It's called summons. Section 61 to 69 CPC address summons process. So what is conduct money fee paid to witness in civil cases? Whereas in criminal cases, no fee is paid is what you have to remember. Now, a 40 year old with a history of chronic alcoholism is brought to the clinic by the family members. He is experiencing continuous dreamlike state with delusions. So, management of, of this patient's case, care and property is under. Yes. Right. Sauro rightly found what is that movie? So, Mental Health Act 1987. 30 year old with emergency department sexual assault. Ligurs epithelial cells test is used to detect the male epithelial cells in the vagina post intercourse. And it is positive within 96 hours, is what you have to remember. So, in the accused, Javan, correct. Torn frenulum may indicate 
recent sexual activity. Ligur's epithelial cells test positive within 96 hours. In the victim, mobile spermatozoa within past 12 hours suggest recent intercourse. Firm presence determined by vaginal sphere up to 24 hours. Tolgidin blue dye test is used to detect the micro injuries. Is what you need to remember. Now, during the course of a medical class, the code of Hammurabi is recognized as oldest known medical code is what you need to remember. Chinese medicine ages back to 2700 BC. Manu's code in India is the first traditional law and medical guide. Manu Dharma Shastra. So, doctor, I leave a bit of history to you. 30 year old factory worker, difficulty breathing, grayish discoloration of the mouth. So, grayish white mouth and nephropathy together suggest mercury poisoning is what you need to remember. Mercury poisoning. 24 year old hiker. Marked swelling and pain in the lower leg after a snake bite and he reports seeing a snake with a distinctive diamond pattern on its skin. The 20 minute whole blood clotting test is positive. So the moment there is swelling and a positive 20 minute whole blood clotting test, that means systemic envenomation, he need to be given polyvalent snake antigenin intravenously is what you need to remember. So I leave the literature for you. How do you do the snake bite management? See snake, myotoxic viper, hemotoxic cobra and cry a neurotoxin. That's what you need to remember. So you need to administer anti-snake venom. Eight to ten vials is what you need to remember. Now. A researcher is designing a study to know the efficacy of a new drug for reducing the BP. So larger effect sizes lead to higher power of the investigation, making it too easier to detect an effect if at all one exists. So what is the definition of power? Power is equal to 1 minus beta. Beta is the probability of the type 2 error. Power represents the Ability of the test to defend, detect the effect if at all one exists. Power reflects the test sensitivity. How do you increase the power? Increase the sample size. Increase the test sensitivity which you are using. Decrease the beta that is type 2 error probability is what you need to remember. A research team creates a histogram. It shows a peak in the middle with fewer cases in the earlier and later years. What does it indicate? That the disease peak and then the, and then the, there is a decrease in frequency. So you should know histogram kya hota hai? X axis displays continuous groups. Y axis displays frequencies. And it will help you to visualize the distribution of the data points. The histogram is what you need to remember. <clears throat> a 25 year old man comes to the clinic concerned about a potential HIV exposure. He had a high risk encounter four weeks ago. What are the best tests? Always the screening test for HIV is ELISA. Confirmatory is a Western blot, as all of you know very well. So 32 year old construction worker, he already suffered impairment and what he is having is disability due to the loss of lower limb and the next step is to limit this disability through rehabilitation. How do you do that? By starting the prosthetic fitting. So you should know definitions of impairment, disability and handicap very, very clearly. 28 year old who has echinococcus. What is the role of human? Humans are incidental, dead end force for the echinococcus because they do not allow the transmission to the definitive host, is what you need to remember. So, different types of force.
the only host required by a parasite is called the obligate host humans in the case of the measles are an example of obligate host is what you need to remember so what you are seeing here is a follow endemic so high infection rate in children is follow endemic constantly high disease rate affecting all age groups is hyperendemic infrequent irregular cases is sporadic and widespread over large areas is pandemic is what you need to basically remember that nine month old is brought for a routine checkup you are doing vaccination how much time is required to space between two vaccines live vaccines at least three weeks apart 35 year old with nocturnal fever thickening of the skin he lives in an area endemic to lymphatic filariasis what are the most sensitive tests to diagnose low density microfilaremia membrane filter concentration method on a night blood sample so you should know the various diagnostic methods doing mass blood survey is the most common method epidemiologically when you do blood collection thick film using 20 microliters of capillary blood collected between 8:30 pm to 12 pm membrane filter concentration method for low density microfilariemia is very sensitive similarly what are the doses if it is a dec medicated salt doses 1 to 4 grams if it is dec per kg of salt 1 to 4 gram dec per kg of salt you have to give for 6 to 9 months is what you need to remember so i leave the literature for you doctor a public health concern consultant is developing a proposal to integrate traditional medicine into mainstream in rural area so national rural health mission he need to approach national rural health mission was launched in 2005 aims to incorporate ayush strengthens healthcare in rural areas is what you have to basically remember now if you look at the specifics of the neural national rural health mission it provide effective healthcare in 18 states which have a weak healthcare infrastructure so which program may the aim wow wonderful doctor nice to see 18 online classmates very good doctor so laksha is the focus on improving the labor room quality it enhances the patient satisfaction and maternity care is fortunate to remember ragi is economical and rich source of calcium while rice is poor in calcium and vitamins is what you need to remember so in the disaster management what are the various phases doctor preparedness response rehabilitation reconstruction mitigation and once more preparedness so we pass it through all that in tackling the covid so even neat pg preparation also preparedness response rehabilitation reconstruction mitigation and preparedness once more is what you need to remember so a 10 year old boy presents to the clinic with severe abdominal pain bloody diarrhea after eating hamburger undercooked beef ke baad aane wala diarrhea jo hota hai that is because of the shiga toxin Enteral hemorrhage E. coli produce shiga toxin. Hamburger beef. Clostridium difficile causes foul smelling diarrhea. If you give antibiotics, it can worsen. Clostridium perfringens is non bloody diarrhea, abdominal pain. Rotavirus is common in pediatric age group, leading to acute gastroenteritis. So Staphylococcus aureus lead to vomiting, abdominal pain without the fever. which is a very very characteristic feature is what you should remember a sexually active 25 year old woman sore throat lower abdominal pain 
So pharyngitis and pelvic inflammatory disease is equal to gonorrhea is what you should remember. The patient is having a significant amount of hyperthyroidemia. Normally it is 150 is the upper limit of triglycerides. So 2500 is there and now serum lipase is elevated means it is hyperthyroidemia induced pancreatitis is what you need to remember. So any elevated serum lipase more than three times the upper limit of the normal is diagnostic criteria. Thiazides, ACE inhibitors are known to lead to drug induced pancreatitis. Six year, year old, the heartbeat feels more regular, but his ECG shows wide end the cures. So remember, doctor, it is the class 1C antiarrhythmic drugs. Like flacainide can cause the widening of the QRS due to slower conduction velocity, especially with faster heart rates. So class 1C blocks sodium channels rapidly. It's called use-dependent block, meaning increased efficacy with faster heart rate. They can widen the QRS complex. And flacainide, propofenone, class 1C. And they have no significant QT interval prolongation. That's what you need to basically remember. Now, 25-year-old comes to emergency with sudden onset of facial swelling, difficulty breathing, widespread arctic area. All this presentation is in sync with anaphylaxis. So we need to give intramuscular epinephrine is considered to be the treatment of choice. 43-year-old with fatigue and jaundice, hemolysis, anemia, low haptoglobin, elevated LDH, and thrombosis, very important, is indicative of paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin urea. So, doctor, if you download the score app, you have all the video library where we discussed all these high yield facts in about uh, 600 hours of video content. You can go topic wise and then pick up the topic where you are going wrong, falling short, and then do the revision. So PNH is confirmed by the presence of CD55, CD59 on the flow cytometry is what you need to remember. A 65-year-old uh, before that. The next question. A 55-year-old with the known bicuspidiotic valve has two-week history of the low-grade fever. So whenever bicuspid aortic valve with aortic regurgitation is there along with the systemic symptoms means think about infective endocarditis and transesophageal echocardiography is more sensitive than transthoracic echocardiography to identify the perivalvular axis is what you need to remember. A 65 year old with a history of the stroke, subsequent dysphagia, sputum is foul smelling, infiltrate in the superior segment of the right lower lobe. So always whenever there is any aspiration pneumonia, there are a lot of anaerobic organisms, oral anaerobes are responsible. Clindamycin is the treatment of choice is what you need to remember. So once more aspiration pneumonia, how do you treat? Avoid monotherapy with metronidazole because it leads to high failure rate is what you should remember. 32 year old with a known HIV with a bright red firm and friable nodules, which is typical of bacillary angiometasis. Bright red firm nodule, which is caused by Bartonella hansele, is the organism responsible. It is treated with erythromycin, is what you need to remember. Why not Kaposi? Because he is HIV positive. Typically, they are not friable, is what you need to, and they have a purple color. 20 year old, type 1 diabetes, blood glucose is very high, 500, and the patient is having diabetic ketoacidosis you are treating. So, whenever you treat, initially you start 0.9% saline. Always, what is the main part of the treatment of DKA, doctor? DKA treatment involves not just giving insulin, but also to maintain hydration. 
to maintain sodium potassium levels. Typically, when the patient arrives, potassium may look normal. The moment you start insulin therapy, potassium will move intracellular and that can lead to hypokalemia. So that's the reason always be watchful of hypokalemia after you start the treatment. And after initial volume repletion, after giving normal saline, if the serum sodium is normal or sometimes high, switch to 0.45%, half normal saline. That is a very important part of the management. It is fortunate to remember. 30-year-old, two-day history of repeated vomiting. So whenever repeated vomiting is there, dehydration is there, decreased plasma volume is there, that lead to decreased renal plasma flow, that lead to release of renin angiotensin and aldosterone and lead to hyperaldosteronism, such a hyperaldosteronism which occurred because of the dehydration, because of volume contraction, is called contraction alkalosis. When our aldosterone is high, what will happen? High aldosterone causes retention of sodium and loss of K plus H plus into urine. Loss of H plus into urine, loss of acid into urine will lead to alkalosis in the blood, which is called contraction alkalosis, which occurs. So remember once more the sequence. Vomiting, vomiting leads to dehydration. So don't forget, doctor. So these are all the funda. These are all the funda, doctor. Vomiting lead to dehydration. Dehydration leads to decrease in plasma volume. Decrease in plasma volume decreases the renal plasma flow. Just imagine yourself inside the body of the patient. Decreased renal plasma flow stimulates the renin and angiotensin. High angiotensin lead to aldosterone. High aldosterone will lead to retention of sodium, loss of K plus H plus into urine. Loss of K plus into urine lead to hypokalemia in the blood. Loss of H plus into urine lead to alkalosis in the blood. So all is because of secondary hyperaldosteronism, because of the plasma volume contraction. So how do you treat this condition, doctor? Basically, you need to give normal saline. You need to give normal saline. Once you give normal saline, once plasma volume becomes normal, once more the renal plasma flow replenishes, once more renin angiotensin normalizes, there is no more caliuresis. There is no sodium retention. There is no loss of H plus into urine. All that alkalosis, hypokalemia, which have happened because of the secondary hyperaldosteronism due to dehydration will get automatically corrected if you happen to give. The saline is what you need to remember. So Anita says, please try to discuss all the 200 questions. No. If I discuss all 200 questions, I'm almost spoon feeding you. Let us not do that. Even to our own children, we should not teach fully. 50% hold the hand and then make them walk. Remaining 50% that intrinsic creativity in the learner, intellectual curiosity need to come out. You should get motivated to solve the questions. First time it looks hard for you to Finish the entire test and solve all the 200 questions. Later, as the time progresses, you get habituated. And the time comes where you know how to solve the 200 questions just like that. Not even in three hours, but in only one and a half hour in the tomorrow's actual exam. I want you to build that kind of a stamina in all these sessions, doctor. Now, let's continue our journey. So, the next question, patient is on long-term metformin therapy. Always take the test and come to the exam, doctor. Always take the test and come to the exam. Then, this whole exercise looks very interesting for you, right? Now, 
Long term metformin therapy is a risk factor for vitamin B12 deficiency, which can lead to subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord, leading to positive Romberg's test and decreased vibration sensation. Is what you need to remember. So, sensory ataxia, positive Romberg, positive Babinski. Why Babinski positive? Corticospinal tract is involved. Why it is involved in vitamin B12 deficiency? Vitamin B12 is required for the myelination of the long tracts. Corticospinal tract is called pyramidal tract. Typically, it demyelination in the spinal cord of that pyramidal tract, corticospinal tract, leads to Babinski positive. Romberg is positive because dorsal columns which are ascending up are carrying the vibration and proprioception from the lower limbs. And the moment that proprioception is affected, you get a Romberg's test positive. That's what you need to remember. 43 year old women, typically temporomandibular joint disorder. Advise a soft diet and provide enzymes is considered to be the treatment of choice. Next one. 32 year old treated with phenytoin presents with fatigue, macrocytic anemia. So, what is the most important part of the regime? Folic acid. Phenytoin can lead to development of megaloblastic anemia. So, methotrexate, trimetoprim, pyrimethamine, they all lead to megaloblastic anemia, is what you have to remember. 50 year old episodic neck pain, occasional tingling, typical of cervical spondylosis. You need to ask him to do physical therapy, and as the six is considered to be the treatment. Now, doctor, a 65 year old man, history of hypertension, type 2 diabetes, his BP is 165 by 95, blood glucose is 190. Any sudden onset of pure motor heavy paresis without any sensory or cortical signs means it is a lacunar stroke. Lacunar stroke is typically treated, I mean identified with the MRI which is more sensitive than the CT scan. 78 year old Alchemist dementia, sudden headache, focal neurological deficits in an elderly patient with Alchemist dementia who has a low bar hemorrhage is indicative of cerebral amyloid angiopathy which is because of the beta pleated amyloid proteins of alchemists depositing in the cerebral vessels any age more than 75 with alchemist dementia is a very very important risk factor for amyloid angiopathy doctor 32 year old hiv cd4 positive Fundoscopy show yellow white retinal lesions near the phobia with the scattered hemorrhages classical of cytomegalovirus retinitis. 78 year, year old, he has no history of noise exposure. He has a gradually declined over past few years for high pitched voices. He suggests to press by acusis. Press by acusis is what you need to remember. So, point of interest here is the age related hearing loss typically is high frequency sensory neural type of hearing loss is what you have to basically remember. 32 year old C6, C6 SCI, spinal cord injury. So, those who have spinal cord injury develop autonomic dysreflexia where there will be acute uncontrolled hypertension response to noxious stimuli that is painful stimuli below the level of injury. The moment you stimulate, there is an autonomic reflexia for someone who had spinal cord injury is what you should remember. 25 year old with difficulty releasing his grip after a handshake, bilateral temporal wasting, difficulty swallowing, Classical of myotonic dystrophy type 1 is what you have to remember. So what is myotonic dystrophy because of Dr. CTG trinucleotide 
Repeat is what you need to basically remember. Or DMPK gene defect is responsible for the myotonic dystrophy. So, 33 year old John D. Smela is dark during after a recent return from travel. One minute. Yeah. Any recent history to any endemic area, unprotected sex, then all the risk factors for hepatitis A and B and post exposure prophylaxis with hepatitis A is very much indicated. Now, six year old with a skin thickening, recent dyspnea, heartburn, he had systemic sclerosis classically. So, manometry confirms the diagnosis where the lower esophageal sphincter incompetence, hypomotility, they all can be identified. A 22 year old with a history of sickle cell trait now has difficulty to concentrate the urine, hypostenuria. Whenever we get dehydrated, we produce a concentrated urine. Inability to produce a concentrated urine when we are dehydrated is a sign of tubular dysfunction. Patients normal serum sodium, no glucosuria. So that all such a sickle cell trait is what you need to remember. 45 year old comes to the clinic. Alcohol consumption is a known risk factor for the breast cancer is what you have to remember. Case control studies may, what do you do? Odds ratio is the one which is used to measure, measure the causation and association is what you need to remember. 45 year old, 44 inches, BP high. So central obesity, elevated fasting glucose, hypertension, high triglyceridemia, low HDL cholesterol defines the metabolic syndrome. I leave all the diagnostic criteria, one of the favorite questions of the examiner doctor. Right now, 11 year old male with moderate inflammatory facial acne. Whenever moderate acne not fully responsive to benzoyl peroxide, the addition of a topical antibiotic like clindamycin is considered to be the best treatment. So, what is the initial treatment of acne, doctor? Topical retinoid, Tajo, Taja routine, retinoin, they all inhibit comedogenesis. Benzoyl peroxide has a bacterial activity against the uh, acne. Then add on is topical antibiotic like clindamycin. Then oral antibiotic like doxycycline. For widespread acne or when topical agents are ineffective, then you give doxycycline is what you have to remember. 63 year old. Recently detected lung nodule and uh, you have told him about the importance of the CT scan. So always provide a clear verbal written follow up instruction with a scheduled appointment after the hospital discharge is very, very important doctor. So these are some of the things in the clinical practice, they matter everything. Even though you're a super duper doctor, if you are not sure how to communicate with the patient, how to explain the patient, how to make the patient compliant to the therapy, very, very important. 70 year old, painful rash on the forehead, distance and burning sensation. What is that? Herpes jostered of thalmicus. How do you treat? High dose antivirals. Acyclovir is the one which needs to be initiated. But when you should initiate ideally in herpes zoster, within 72 hours of eruption. And the high dose acyclovir reduces the complications like dendritic corneal ulcer, is what you should remember. 65 year old man with a history of smoking, has COPD, 
And what is the reason for the increased functional residual capacity? It is the decreased elasticity of the alveoli with the hyperinflation of the lung. The chest wall compliance decreases and that will cause an increase in FRC and a barrel shaped, barrel shaped chest is the classical feature is what you need to remember. Three-year-old boy with fatigue, fever, easy bruising, signs of bone marrow failure, hepatosplenomegaly, that all suggests acute leukemia, lymphoblasts on the peripheral sphere are characteristic of ALL, is what you need to remember. So more than 25% blasts on bone marrow biopsy. Circulating blasts, age 2 to 5, they're all the important diagnostic criteria of ALL. 20 year old with family history of sickle cell, episodic painless hematuria. Always think of the possibility of the renal papillary necrosis. What are the four causes of renal papillary necrosis? Sickle cell anemia, diabetic nephropathy, and algesic nephropathy. These are all the causes of the renal papillary necrosis. You should not forget, doctor. Favorite question of the examiner. Seven year old child. Fever was there, transient proteinuria is there. So whenever transient proteinuria occurred during a febrile illness and resolves once the illness subsides, no further workup is really necessary. Three day old, poor feeding, temperature instability. So all this is suggestive of neonatal sepsis. You need to treat with ampigenta. So what is the cause of the early onset neonatal sepsis, doctor? Group B streptococcus, E. coli, Listeria, they are the causes. Late onset, they are often hospital acquired and various pathogens responsible is what you need to remember. Now, doctor, six month old is brought to the pediatricians, swollen scrotum, fluctuating. So it's all typical of hydrocele in an infant. Fluctuation is a size related to crying is characteristic of a communicating hydrocele. Trans elimination positivity indicates the likelihood of hydrocele over inguinal hernia. Most hydroceles that you see in infants resolve spontaneously by age one and do not require immediate intervention is what you need to remember. Three-year-old girl, two-day history, bloody diarrhea, vomiting. Recently eaten barbecue, so hamburger, the moment hamburger word comes, you should think of the shiga toxin producing E. coli O157 H7. Abdominal pain, vomiting, blood diarrhea, symptoms onset three to four days after the exposure. How do you confirm? By stool culture. And uh, hemolytic uremic syndrome is seen only in less than 10% of the sugar toxin producing E. coli patients. And how do you identify hemolytic uremic syndrome? Microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, acute kidney injury, generally support to care. And be careful, antibiotics increase the risk of HUS. Antibiotics contraindicated in HUS is what you have to remember. So for Shigella, erythromycin, subtrioxone, ciprofloxin. Shigella by itself less likely to cause HUS compared to Shiga toxin producing E. coli. Salmonella, primitoprim, sulfamitoxazole for severe cases. Diarrhea in Salmonella is usually non-bloody. Phosphidium difficile treatment with vancomycin or metadazole. So these are all the things that you need to Remember, now no. term male newborn presents with abdominal distension, decreased urine output. So, palpable bladder, symptoms of obstructive uropathy, that is all suggestive of the posterior urethral valves, is what you need to remember. And you need to evaluate it by doing. Uh, uh, posture urethral valve by doing uh, the 
Hell, we call the sound is what you should remember. So, whenever there is a less weight loss than expected or weight gain, you should suspect postural valve. There can be a respiratory distress due to postural valve because of the oligohydramnios in the fetal life leading to hypoplasia of the lungs. You need to do renal and dander ultrasound, dilated bladder, bilateral hydronephrosis is the characteristic feature. You need to do endoscopic ablation of the posture urethral valves. Bladder drainage, electrolyte correction is considered to be the treatment. Two-year-old boy brought to pediatric clinic for routine checkup. Squinting a lot. Trouble seeing. So patient, baby has aniridia. Aniridia with genitourinary problems. What is that called? Wagner syndrome. What is the favorite question of the examiner? Wagner is due to WT1 gene deletion. Will tumor aniridia, genitourinary anomalies and intellectual disabilities characterize the Wagner syndrome. Typically, will tumor is bilateral presence much earlier by age 1 to 3. Half of the patients of Wagner have will tumor. Abdominal ultrasound every three months in infancy and early childhood should be done to identify the presence of Wagner is what you need to remember. I leave all this literature, doctor. Back with treatment, neurofibromatosis type 1, multiple endocrine, neoplasia type 2. Everything you need to be very sure. In one mind map, you get everything. So today only, please go to the, uh, please go to the learnograph.com. You have paper one, paper two, paper three, already we published eight papers, all 50 papers slowly we will publish. So YouTube discussion is free, but you need to solve the paper. You need to go through the 200 mind maps in every paper. That's that you can do, you should do, you must do by going to lardograph.com and today only download the PDF, solve the paper and join the discussion doctor. So let us run through few more before we hit 12 p.m. Two-year-old boy is brought to the pediatric clinic, Vagar syndrome, already over. 16-year-old, recent history of the vision problems, heart murmur, very tall, arachnodactyly, aortic root dilatation. What else is needed? Marfan syndrome is the diagnosis. Four-year-old girl, significant medical history of a humming noise, means missionary-like murmur, which is seen in patent ductus arteriosus. Hypopigmented numb patches and presence of acid fast bacillus are just mycobacterium lepre. Mycobacterium lepre. 24 year old male with in leprosy endemic area, several hypopigmented skin lesions, posse bacillary leprosy. Always remember, posse bacillary. Uh, You treat with DR, doctor, D for Dapson, R for Lifams. Multi bacillary, you treat with DDC, Dapson, Tofasamine, and Rifampicin. CDR, actually. Hmm? So, second line drugs are ufloxacin, pefloxacin, minocycline, clarithromycin. Most effective drug of all, Raja. Rifampicin is called Raja, is what you need to. Remember, rifampicin is the raja among the mycobacterial drugs. 45 year old, sudden onset of painful rise and red lesions with a history of AML, such as sweet syndrome, recent respiratory infection, neutrophilia aligned with the diagnosis. So it is more commonly seen in women, especially with AML, solid tumors, drugs like all trans retinoic acid can lead to acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis, which is called sweet syndrome caused by 
Yersinia infection, 10% cases, malignancy. It can be medication induced with all trans retinoic acid. I leave the literature for you, doctor, for you to do the revision. 24 year old, discolored patches on the back that worsen with sun exposure. So, patches are oval, scaly, hypopigmented compared to her sun tanned skin. So, classical of Tinea versicolor caused by Melissezia furfa. We give selenium sulfide shampoo 2.5% or ketoconazole shampoo is a treatment of choice. So once more, if you put them wrong, you have to master all the high yield facts about pitidiasis versicolor, otherwise called tinea versicolor. I leave the literature for you, doctor, all the important points about it. A plastic surgeon is planning to perform a skin graft. To minimize skin scarring, what he should respect? Langer's lines represent the variation of the collagen fibers in the dermis is what you need to remember. 22-year-old with a history of malignant hyperthermia. Don't give isoflurane, which is a volatile anesthetic known to trigger the malignant uh, hyperthermia. So what drugs are safe and unsafe, doctor? Nitrous oxide, thiopentone, benzodiazepines, barbiturates, local anesthetics, non depolarizing mother relaxants, propofol. They are the things. Ketamine and pancuranium usage, you need to be careful because of potential tachycardia. But what drugs lead to malignant hyperthermia? So, phenylcholine, halothane, isoflurane, anfurane, silofurane, bacurane, bisoxflurane, all furanes. Oh my God. Then lidocaine, babyvocaine, trichloroethylene, ethyl chloride, ethylene. Oh, so many things. Sajanaicoline leads to malignant hyperthermia. Non depolarizing mother relaxants are safe in malignant hyperthermia. God save the country. God save the meat PG aspirants. You have to ratta maro, batti maro, kuchbi karo. Fata fat revision karo Murli Bharadvaj ke saath. Right, Adnan Ismail rightly said, mother of all anesthetics is propofol. Propofol is also called milk of amnesia. Now, 65 year old male undergoing surgery requiring neuromuscular blocking. Post adenic facilitation is absent. Administration of anti cholinesterase agents. Potentiate the neuromuscular block. So you must know the polarizing versus non-depolarizing block. Please review this, doctor. One of the favorite questions of examiner. I leave the literature for you. Anesthesiologist is preparing to intubate a two-year-old. So which laryngoscope blade is most appropriate? Miller blade is a straight blade designed for the children. McIntosh blade is typically used in adults because of the curved design. McCoy blade is a modified McIntosh that can be flexed. Polio blade has a more obtuse angle. So you need to know all these blades. If not, examiner will cut your throat with topaz blade. Now, seven-year-old girl scheduled for elective surgery. So always original traditional teaching was use uncuffed tubes in children under eight. But recent uh, evidence say use the micro cuff tubes in all ages to prevent aspiration is what you need to remember. I leave the literature for you. Different endotracheal tubes you need to be very, very sure about. A plastic surgeon planning to perform skin graft, Langer hands lines, you have to be very sure. 24 year old with discolored patches. You need to remember Malassezia for Faris, selenium shampoo. 54 year old with a history of hypertension and abdominal pain. Left adrenal gland is showing calcifications. Any adrenal adenoma often lead to calcifications which are identified in CT because calcifications have a very high Hounds field unit values. So, everything you should know, Dr. Bone. Plus 1000 is HU. Water is 0. 8000. Lung 700. Fat 50. 
CSF 15, blood 30 to 45, muscle is 40. Oh my God. You need to remember. Each pixel of CT scan measures 0.25 to 0.6 mm in diameter is what you should remember. 65 year old male, difficulty urinating, prostate specific antigen is 5. High rats score is 3 means you need to do transrectal ultrasound guided biopsy of the prostate is what you need to remember. So Pyrax uses MRI specific to prostate. It employs three things. T2 weighted images, which is crucial to identify transition zone assessment in the prostate. Diffusion weighted image to know the peripheral zone assessment. So that is what it uses. And Pyrax score is a way to do the assessment and the version 2 of the pyrax it does not use the mr spectroscopic imaging that's what you need to understand now 60 year old history of hypertension severe headache suspected of renal artery stenosis whenever renal artery stenosis is there string of beads sign is a very characteristic feature so all these radiological signs, you need to be very, very sure, doctor, for the tomorrow's need PG. What is Bragg's peak? Bragg's peak allows protons to deposit maximum energy at a specific depth. Minimizing the damage to the surrounding tissue is called Bragg's peak. Now, it is the iridium 92, which has a short life suitable for high dose rate brachytherapy is what you need to remember. So all these radionuclides, doctor, you should know what are their half-lives. Radium-226, half-life is 600 years, first isotope used, but now obsolete. Iridium-92, half-life is 74 days and used for rate, high dose rate brachytherapy. Whereas cesium-137 is the one which is used for low-dose rate brachytherapy. Oh, my God. So, doctor, 33-year-old, painless sperm, testicular mass, homogeneous testicular lesion, typically seminoma, highly radiosensitive, favorable outcome with radiotherapy is what you should remember. Right, doctor? Now, so what are... Highly radiosensitive tumors, seminoma, digerminoma, Ewing sarcoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, neuroblastoma, small cell lung cancer, small cell lung cancer also, cancer of the cervix and uterus, vagina, head and neck cancer, spinal metastasis, what are poorly radiosensitive, malignant melanoma, glioma, sarcoma, carcinoma, colon, cancer of the kidney, cancer of the pancreas, and metastasis from either colon, kidney, pancreas, poorly radiosensitive. A list though, maro. There is no other option for the tomorrow's need PG doctor. So, you say, Hamare Achke is Mahaprasthan ko band karke. हमारे समावेश को बंद करेंगे और एक बात आप याद रखना यू नीड टू बिलीव यू आर बोर्न टू बी टॉप कंसल्टेंट्स ऑलरेडी 1.5 मिलियन पीपल को हार के आपने एमबीबीएस पे सीट पाया नाउ दिस कंपटीशन इज नथिंग जस्ट टू लैक पीपल यू आर गोइंग टू बी द विनर गुड नाइट एंड We'll once more meet tomorrow with test number eight revision. Good night.